Hey, it's your boy, Sergeant Hooked on Heroes, with another brand speaking review slash recap of Comrade Geats, episode 34. I definitely haven't seen this episode before it, it aired or before subtitles were available. I didn't, I promise you. <laughs> um, if you didn't know, uh, episode 34 was straight leaked last week uh, when 33 came out on the Toei Tokusatsu fan club channel or just some other like youtube type video uploading channel of some kind. Um, and uh, yeah, a little bit early, clearly, a week early. Uh, so I watched it raw a couple times um, without the subtitles, clearly. And I've watched it twice now with subtitles, so I want to kind of d- jump into the nitty gritty. So from last week's episode, um, we get the whole thing with Buffa and, you know, being overpowered, no comrade can touch him, blah, blah, blah. And Sumeri event essentially awakening in her goddess of creation powers or goddess of creation candidate powers, wishing so hard on Geetz's ID core that it brings him back. They don't know how, it just does. Um, and the very beginning of this episode, uh, Geetz actually is the one that uh, is fighting uh, Chirim for the most part until, of course, Buffa comes in and steals the kill. So Chirim's gone, which means uh, um, Glare 2 is gone. <coughs> And uh, uh, we're introduced to Sudaru, Su- Sudaru, yeah, who is the new, um, basically the executive producer of the whole DGB. Now he's calling it the Desire Rail. If you remember, just like in the movie, the Desire Rail and that, where all the riders had to fight each other and blah, blah, blah. And uh, that, you know, whoever wins will get this grand wish to change the world how they stay fit. They can even get rid of the DGP. Will the DGP still be around if, after their wish? Again, really unique stuff in that we see Ace flashing back to the movie, making the movie canon. I really like this because writer shows sometimes struggle with doing fucking anything with the V cinemas and if they're canon to anything, especially the summer movies, you know, the crossover movies, and if they're canon to anything. Um, one I can think of for sure is the Ghost and Drive movie because that one had its own way that he got um, uh, Token Boost as opposed to how he got it in the show. Um... So, yeah, sometimes Rider Shows really fucking struggle with that, but they didn't here. And they, they're, like, showing that it's, like, pretty much one of the same type of thing. It's just come back into creation now. Um, and that the point of it now is is <coughs> gathering ID cores, I think, pretty much, or just, you know, and whatever. And so, the I main problem being that Buffa's wish of being the power to destroy all common Riders, no common Rider can touch him. Except, perhaps, a Jamato could, because they're not Riders. So... Um, we also get the introduction of Sarah joining the game fully. Um, she's uh, going off on this policeman about where her brother is. She's really upset. She doesn't understand what happened and how he's gone. And she's eventually approached by Kekera. Kekera um, takes the vision driver after Chiram is destroyed and he takes it with him to Berla. And he says, you know, hey, if you can help me find a way to bring back Kewa, I will, you know, it'll help you so, so much misery, blah, blah, blah. I do and I don't like this turn for Kekara. He always seemed like a decently heroic person and he seemed to be really upset that Kewa was gone. I just didn't think he'd take the role of let's work with the literal current villain or one of the villains such villain, villainesses and work with them. I find that kind of weird. But it's not a bad thing and it's neither here nor there. But <clears throat> Sorry about my goofy cough and bleh thing. I'm almost the end of it. Um so he meets up with Sarah. Um, he's a little, you know, in his little froggy statue form. I just love that frog statue. I hope they sell it, even if it's pee band. I, I just want it in my yard, in my house. I don't know. Um, and tells her, hey, if you open up that, that box there, touch that ID core that's in there, it'll all make sense. So she does so. She remembers, you know, everything about K1, everything that she's seen in the DGP, blah, blah, blah. And he has her join. Um, and that she may be able to get her wish to get Kayla back. And so... Um, She's involved now, and uh, she um, meets back up with Neon. Neon has a little bit of a thing with Kuhn, who asks her, you know, what are you still in this world for? And she goes, what do you mean? Like, I feel like you're really struggling finding true love. Why don't you come with me to the future? Like, it'd be all pretty much things created just like you are. He's like, what do you even know what my wish is? And he's like, what do you mean? My desire or wish? She's like, what? He's like, a world without Neon. I think if there was a world without Neon, nobody knew who Neon was. Maybe my fans wouldn't be upset if I were just to go away. I feel like right now, if I were to go away, all my fans of, you know, Neon TV would be really upset with me, and I don't want that to happen. Um, so I like this about her, and I like this kind of new start of an arc for her, why she's fighting, that she wants to kind of get rid of 
her persona of being Neon and be fully probably Akari or just in general not Neon, right? And so we move forward and um, she meets up with Sarah in the forest where they're having their first run of the DGP or the, sorry, the, the DR, this is her rail. Um, and uh, Sarah's like, start, you know, starstruck, oh my God, you're, you know, Neon, blah, blah, yeah, yeah, blah, 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 and your kid was sister. And he's like, yeah. And then Daichi comes out of nowhere and just all of a sudden has this random power up. Like, it's the same monster buckle, but he's like really fucking strong. It can somehow take on Neon, even though he wasn't that strong before. Whatever. So we get to see um, Sarah's henchman pose. And it's very much so a combination of Kawa's and Neon's, which I think is interesting because I don't know if she ever saw a Neon transform. So it was just like, I feel like she just watched her as she was doing it. It's like, oh, okay. And then just combine the two. It's cool. And it's cute. And I like it. So she gets her um, comrade, or is it Hokubi? Ho -ho Hokubi? Ho Fubuki? Hokubi? Something like that. Little, like, red panda, raccoon -y type, you know, thing similar to Tycoon. And the claw uh, buckle. There's another thing they're fighting. Uh, they're both getting their ass beat by Daiji. And uh, Neon isn't fully, you know, unhenched or demorphed yet. And he's like, you wait right here. I gotta go take care of something. He's literally about to go, like, kick the shit out of Sarah when she's not even transformed. Um, but then in comes in Buffa. And he's like, fight me and blah, blah, blah. I'm your target. And, and Daiji's like, ha, ha, see you later, loser. And just leaves, just yeets himself out of there. Um, but he's about to take on both Neon and Sarah. And they're saved at the last moment by Kawa. Kawa ends up joining the fight again. Um, he's been watching. He Kekura showed him that it was on TV. And he's watching it. Hadn't touched his core. And he joined up with the fight again. And Kekura's plan is he thinks that the only real misery that will happen. And in doing so, a transformation for uh, Kawa to make him a better person, make him stronger, will be if his sister's involved. I'm really hoping my good friend Ziyawagito is wrong. And the reason that tycoon gets his final form is not because of his sister's death <laughs> i'm hoping that's not what it is but Ryder likes to be cruel that way sometimes so maybe it will be i don't know but he gets in there in the ninja buckle he's beating daichi's ass all over the place daichi runs away like a little bitch like he is um buffa comes in being an asshole again of course and geats comes in and saves them with boost mark too um and afterwards we have a really 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 interesting conversation with ace and koa which is really sad and heartbreaking um, he essentially says to him, like, oh, well, I'm trying to free my mother. And he's like, your mother? He's like, hey, he's like, the creation goddess? He goes, yeah. He's like, no. He's like, I can't help you with that, Ace. He's like, what do you mean? He's like, she's the reason for all this misery. To create the happiness and the wishes for everybody that's ever competed, she's literally sacrificed the lives of everyone that's ever died to create that for other people. I can't let that happen. I can't be a part of that. I can't support that. You know, my mother did nothing wrong. And, of course... Kawa doesn't fully know that his mother's being held hostage, held to go through will, and was forced to become the, the creation goddess. Um, but I like this, like, back and forth between them where they're not exactly seeing eye to eye. Um, doesn't necessarily make me feel like they're going to have, like, a dark Kawa arc, but definitely one where he's not, he's more, way more opposed to Ace and less willing to work with him, which I like. I like that it's not so hunky-dory between the two, and we can have some kind of mistrust and some bumps along the road in their relationship because it happens with friendships you know sometimes certain friends make certain decisions you can't really support and so you got to let them make those mistakes and come back later so they can understand what they did and understand the consequences um <clears throat> and they got true for both of them the consequence of kawa not fully asking enough questions and, and listening to ace and the consequence of ace always thinking he needs to be the sly fox who doesn't tell the truth and blah 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 when he could just be up front, but he's so hurt by what Kawa said, he doesn't feel like he wants to, really. He doesn't feel like he needs to, and it's really sad. Um, so it was overall a really entertaining episode. I like that Kawa is back into it, of course. I like that Sarah's a part of things now. I really hope she's not cannon fire, but who knows. Um, the only real negative is I don't understand this random, like, dark side jump for Kekura, just because he always seemed very, very heroic. But he also, I guess, in certain ways, felt like he would do whatever it takes to show off his contestant as heroic. So maybe he's always kind of been like playing us all along type of thing, playing us, playing us like a damn fiddle all along. And this is just who he really is. I don't know, but we'll see exactly where it goes forward. Um, for the uh, next episode, um, and exactly how the story continues to unfold with everything here. But overall, I really enjoyed it. If I had to score it probably somewhere safely around an eight and a half it wasn't like 
amazing amazing um but it was better than last make i think i scored that one fairly low like an eight so i probably would say closer to maybe like a nine for this one um only because like i said i wasn't the biggest fan of uh Kekera's turn to being like sort of evil i don't really know what we're doing with that so um yeah it wasn't my like favorite thing but i understand what they're kind of where they're going with it so plus i'm interested in seeing tycoon's final form and clearly buffa and even neon's final form as well Speaking of forms, there was some production-y photo thing I saw today that looked like a different ID card little thing for the Laser Raise Riser. Maybe an upgrade for Jean. I don't know. I think it'd be cool if we got an upgrade. I don't think the Laser Raise Riser Riders, God, say that five times fast, uh, necessarily need upgrades, but I would understand it if they got them. Um, I do hope they continue the trend just like Boost Mark II and Laser Boost that the other sponsors are able to give a bit of themselves to their respective contestants they support to create their forms that are their final forms but that's just me um but i really like this like i said i think that um next week episode it did show arkham metal clan make into it and yeah actually able to doing some actually being able to do some damage against buffa because not technically a rider i love that um <clears throat> so again i'm really interested in seeing what happens going forward and where we're going to go with this so far i've been really super into the show it's already my number three season um right up there with the likes of forza and build personally so I'm thinking it has a chance to stay there, but we got to see how they, you know, right in the home stretch, right in the, you know, back nine, whatever you want to call it, you know, the final little stretch of episodes here before the end, which is insanity because it feels like it just started yesterday. Um, but uh, overall, a really decent episode, and I'm excited to see what they do with it. But let me know in the comments below what did you guys think of this week's episode of Geats, uh, Sarah getting to join the Desire Royale, more information about the Desire Royale, K1 Ace having a falling out, all that good stuff. Let me know what you guys think. Um, thank you guys so much again. So much for the love, the likes, the comments, the subscribing, the uh, everything you guys can do watching the videos. It really means a lot to me. We're already almost to 500 subscribers on this channel. Almost 200 on the um, Henshins and Homies page. And above that and beyond on all my other social medias. And I just really appreciate you guys for that. I didn't think I'd be at this point where I would have this much, oh, I don't want to say clout, but support. Support honestly from you guys it really means a lot to me you know and i make the upgrades as i can i mean like i said the camera i'm using right now is a 1080p webcam now so that looks better the ring light so like i'm making upgrades as i can i'm trying to slowly come up with different ideas slowly but surely formulate ideas where i can up the value the production values you guys are getting a better product um i think this compared to when i used to record back at the other house and even before i had the camera is eons above what i had before but again really happy that you guys support me it really does mean a lot um if you guys have any ideas for videos definitely leave them in the comments below or message me directly on twitter at real soul rider red um as far as content this week king oger episode 10 review should be out um and i'm gonna try and do a toku toy review or just some other content for this week or coming up soon um i'm probably gonna do a video talking about the high republic books because i'm really getting into the star wars high republic um there's the uh, poster currently that i have one of them from uh convergence which is a, a wave two phase two book uh there's my custom lightsaber i can uh actually let's see if i'll turn on one here should we go one two three <laughs> yeah um definitely want to do some videos about more star wars stuff in general might talk about mandalorian season three something like that just some other content to add into the channel i know it doesn't always track as well uh, activity wise and views wise but I don't only want to be the tokusatsu channel and that's it I want to be able to kind of gravitate towards other things and be able to move things around and whatever and do whatever content I'd like to um <clears throat> but yeah so uh this week on the show uh for the Henshins and homies um we possibly do an episode about music I don't know 100% we will um there's somebody uh Mint Bari that we might have on talking about music and stuff like that uh but uh, yeah, we'll definitely have an episode out this week for sure. Under the end of the month, I'll definitely be doing a review because I have my ticket secured for Shin Kamen Rider. There's a showing of it <coughs> very close by. And then I'm going to with uh, my very best friend, uh, Tyler, in real life. I'm really excited about it. It's going to be like a one-day type thing. It's probably never going to happen again unless they either add more showings or they end up releasing it you know, physically on Blu-ray or something like that. But um, thank you guys so much for the love and support. I really appreciate the hell out of you guys. But until next time, stay hooked on heroes. 
I will talk to you later. Don't worry, I'll be back in another video. I'll be here talking about Tokusatsu, talking about these cool toys and shit. Uh, okay, bye.